mother, every father uh, on our football team cares about one thing, that our number one priority is the health, safety, and welfare of all of our student athletes. And we know that with uh, St. Francis Health, that's the kind of provider they are, and that's the kind of relationship we have to have. I have a daughter that goes to school here now, uh, and I think I speak not just for the athletic department, but for our entire university and the appreciation we have for, uh, not just because they're a corporate sponsor, and obviously we're very proud and happy that they are that, but also that they're our health provider. Uh, and in the game of football, uh, that's a number one priority with us. Uh, it may be an even bigger priority when we go to Austin, Texas, because uh, uh, anybody that studies football programs and, and, uh, and the historical program that Texas is and the success that they have had over the years and the athletes that they recruit uh, will be walking into a situation where uh, I'm just afraid that the field's going to tilt when we come on that field and it won't be in our direction. It'll be tilted down to the heavier, bigger guys on the other side of the field. But, but we are excited. Uh, I, I, obviously, we opened with Texas. I believe it, uh, some prognosticators have said they're the preseason favorite in the Big 12. Uh, I don't speak about the season, but I know within our first four games, you play the preseason favorite in the Big 12, the defending national champion, and the 13-1 and one defending Sun Belt champion in three of the four games that we play. So it's going to be first game up, but it'll be a few like that that we have to face. Texas uh, will be an incredible challenge for us, but having coached for se seven years at, UA at, at Akron before I was here, this is pretty much the, 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 uh, um, the agenda that you have at our level that we're going to open up with a Power 5 team uh, once or twice during our season, uh, and we have to be able to go out there and do the best that we can. We know we're underdogs. We know we have to uh, uh, go in with that in our mind, but if you don't go out trying to, 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 to convince that you can find a way to win or that a win can't happen, then you've lost before the game begins. And you can't do that because you never know when this may be the game that it happens. And so we will go in to Texas like that, uh, knowing that if we play our best game and think that ball is not round, it's oblong, it bounces funny, it had to bounce our way, maybe it would have to bounce our way. But we will go in uh, hoping that that opportunity might arise and we'll be, we will be ready to play. That being said, uh, I'm excited about our season, being our first press conference. Obviously, we're ready to go play somebody else, and uh, uh, Texas is the first one, but we've got a season ahead of us, and we're excited about where our team may be able to go. Uh, Texas, again, uh, they're coming off uh, – uh, that the, wasn't the best season uh, that they would want to have, just like ours wasn't either last year. But uh, I know in football – uh, in a second-year coaching situation as it is with mine and at Texas, that year between year one and year two quite often is the year of the biggest progress in a football program as you learn to put in a system. And we expect to see the preseason favorite in the Big 12 when we go out there. Very talented football team, uh, an incredible environment. About I don't know if one-third of our players are from Texas, but I'd say that'd be a pretty good number. And I would imagine, just like uh, – Others of us who were born in different states, many of our players grew up wishing they could be a Longhorn or play at the University of Texas. Uh, it might have been their dream, but I'm sure there are players on our team. I know from Louisiana that wish they had been at LSU, Mississippi. You can go all through the states. So this will be a great opportunity for our team to go to one of the great venues in college football, 100,119 people that it holds. It is a, it is a great venue, an historic venue, and so uh, to some extent, the older I get, the more I appreciate uh, prior to playing the game how much it means to be able to, for our young men to carry that in their, in their history and their memories of going into places like this, just like going into Baton Rouge last year and playing, and later on in the year going to Alabama and playing that. So Texas, we know they've got an outstanding team. They've got uh, just a great running back. They've got key players on both sides of the ball. But again, this is about all we can do is play the best football we can play and going there fully prepared, and I assure you that we will be, whether that's enough to keep us in this football game uh, or put us in a position in this to, to, to uh, take it to the wire. I, I, I don't know, but I, I do know that we'll be, our kids are excited, and they'll be ready to play. 
uh, and I'll open up for questions if anybody has questions. Coach, just how relieved do you think your players are to finally line up with someone that's not wearing a ULM helmet? Uh, well, you know, that can, be, that can be the openings question every single year. And it seems to me it's been a long time of practicing. You know, we don't practice three-a-days anymore, uh, and we don't even do two-a-days in pads, but we seem like we go forever, you know, and we have been going since the third week, day of, uh, of August in practice. And, again, remember, these players, they're here going to school and working all summer, and they have, like, one week off. So they've been preparing for this game for all uh, summer. And so, yes, our guys will be so looking forward to playing somebody else, and they will be excited, uh, and they won't sleep before the game. Again, we don't pretend that that somehow that – we, that it diminishes who we play. I mean, that's, that's a huge uh, um, uh, uh, obstacle and opportunity. But they are excited. The kids are getting – get excited. Like I said, when you're going back to Texas and you're from Texas – and you grew up wanting to play for Ike, you could be Texas or, or some of those other schools. It's not fair to say anybody but those other ones are, but we know Texas is one of the ones that many of these young men, but they are excited and eager to go. And so I'm looking for, and I, and I have broadcasted a game in that stadium, but I have never coached a game in that stadium. So it's a, it'll, be, it'll be an exciting time for me as well. Coach heard you on the uh, radio this morning. Uh -huh. You were talking about essentially want to eliminate big plays right. and make them earn it, go the length of the field. So. I know there's a lot of key things you want in this ball game, but do you think maybe two of the biggest is obviously want to win the turnover battle and also kind of shorten the game and win the battle of time of possession? Yeah, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a, as you go into a season, you're trying to turn a losing program into a winning program or keeping us moving forward. You could just almost always, no matter where you coach, say if we eliminate turnovers and not give up big plays, we've got a chance uh, – to win more games uh, than otherwise. And so now when you go into a game like this, how in the world do you – do you are you in a game like this? Well, somehow can you actually get this game – can you get it to the second half? And I'm sure – and I've been, I've been at Auburn playing L ULM or Northeast. I've been play, – I've played a lot of teams on the other side. And, buddy, all I can think about, let's get a couple of big plays. Get our, let's get a couple of big plays, get our, get our backups in. Let's get a couple of big plays early. Uh, and so – Having been on that side, I'm thinking let's don't give up a big play early. Let's don't turn the ball over and give them a cheap one. Let's at least, if they are stronger than we are, let's at least make them take five or six minutes off the clock and score because we know what they want to do. They want to run by you or run over you and get one quick, and all of a sudden the score changes to the point where it becomes a not as much an issue as how much it's going to be. So important, I think – whether you're here or this game or any game, and I've been in a lot of these, uh, that you, uh, if you could just say, let's don't give up the big play. Let's don't turn the ball over. And let's let this, let, let's at least have them earn what they get. And then if they can earn what they get uh, and it takes the clock off, we're not trying to keep the score down. We're just trying to find a way to stay in it. And I think that's what you mean. We just want to stay in it. I don't know that you, uh, it takes a, I don't know that you can ever go into a game like this, and I'm very fortunate to win some from the side that I'm on. Uh, and it always is uh, – it, it's usually a higher, higher scoring game than a no-scoring game, and you've got some pick six in there. You've got a turnover picked up on a fumble. There are certain things that happen that help you diminish – decrease that odds. And uh, so, by all means, don't, don't try to – They'll make big plays. They've got a running back that's incredible. They had a quarterback that was the number one quarterback in the country being recruited who's come back home to play. And uh, defensively, they got some superstars. And so we got to hope that we can, we can just keep it from happening all at once. And if it does, not to happen twice. How do you mentally, mentally prepare your team to go on the road to play a team like Texas? Yes. You know, it, it really it's not hard. I mean, if you, did, if you went on the road and played somebody you never heard of or you played your – you played a, a, a team that was not even our level, I, I think they'd be thinking about the second game. They've been thinking all summer about what it's going to be like. You know, now I don't know if all those thoughts are good, but I hope that they are. But they've all been very – they know who we play, and they know the magnitude of the team and the program that we're playing. So it really isn't hard to get them prepared. When they think about preparing, you know, I don't, what is their – I mean, they want to have a winning record. They want to win. They, wanted, they, they thought they were power five recruit and they didn't get recruited. They want to prove that they are. We'll prove it today. It, uh, I want to prove to the NFL. I'm an NFL-type player. We'll prove it against the game they're going to watch. 
So whatever your motivation is, this will be one of the things that uh, that goes through their mind. Mainly, I want them to play the best football they can play and not mentally lose it before the game is kicked off. You know, oh, my gosh, oh, my God. Because you never know that moment and that moment in time when all of a sudden the game goes to second quarter, it goes to halftime, and all of a sudden you don't know what's going to happen. So, um, again, I, I, our, our players, will they'll have themselves ready to play. Uh, and if it gets crazy at first, it can settle down. You know, it just takes it takes a big one here, a big one there, and all of a sudden it settles down and, and – uh, uh, and you, you, you see possibilities. Coach, you mentioned that a good chunk of your players are from Texas. Uh -huh. How do you handle those emotions going into such a big game? Well, you do. I, mean, I, I think that's one of those things that uh, you, you, when I talk to them on Friday night, there'll be a little bit of that involved in my, in my uh, talk to the team. Relax, and that we can't, you can't win it in your bedroom that night sleeping, or you can't win it on the bench. Uh, I know when I was a, at high school, I was a wrestler. And every time we had a round robin and you had to have three matches, three or four teams together, and you could watch everybody, I was so hyper. I was so emotional. My, my coach would make me sit in the, in the locker room until my match time because I would wrestle two or three other matches. So I have players that are going to go in this. I don't want them to play the game Friday night in their head too much. I don't want them to come out there and have so much anxiety, not so much anxiety, I think anxious for the game, but not in an anxiety type of way. But I don't want their, their heart to be beaten and their, I, don't want to, I don't want them to play it before the game. And so you really probably have to work on that a little bit in the way in which we, we bring it to them and get ourselves uh, mentally ready to go to bed at night on Friday and on Saturday. But, but, you know, if it helps them practice harder, if it helps them to play harder, then that's a positive. If, 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 it, if it makes you so overwhelmed, that it gets you not focused on just doing your do your job. You know that's about all you can do is do your job. You know, and uh, um, and so there's there's a little bit of coaching uh, technique or a coaching um, uh, uh, motivation that you have to apply so you don't really uh, um, get yourself playing the game before the game's played. Coach, there was a lot of talk about the quarterbacks in the off season, but just. Speaking on the running backs and specifically Malik Jackson, how important is he to be able to complement, in this case, Chandler Rogers this week to make him settle into the game? Well, again, again, uh, Chandler at Malik is kind of like to Andrew Henry what Malik, uh, what uh, Chandler is to Jaya Wright or vice versa. I don't think I have the lineup quite like in that we have uh, Andrew Henry has been a, an outstanding tailback for us, Malik has made some big plays and we get excited about that but so has uh andrew henry so i think what malik does he does give you another guy that can take a short play and turn it into a long play whether that will bear out against this team that we have here with such great team speed i can't say that's true but we have to have guys on our offense that can take a small play and make it a big play and a running back to me the quality of a running back uh, at uh, to me is is to is not to necessarily run over a guy, but when you get past all the front guys, there's always a guy that we don't have enough blockers, and it's how do you run? How do you handle the unblocked defender? So a running back that can make the safety miss completely is much more valuable than a running back that's going to run over that safety, which I like. But then everybody else is going to tackle him five yards later. The back that we need is the back that make that safety miss, the unblocked defender miss, so that he takes it 60 yards. Malik has some ability to do that. I would think Andrew Hendry, to a degree, has it too. As we get to Isaiah Phillips, our third back, who is outstanding, he's probably going to just go ahead and run that guy over if he can, and, and uh, in most circumstances. But, but I think that's the value of Malik and Andrew. Um, just as our quarterback, you mentioned Chandler, um, Jaya Wright's been right there nip and tuck with him. And since we don't name a 1A and 1B and play them every other series, we name a starter, and that's who it will be. But I would be very comfortable for Jaya to get into this game and be playing this game because they have a very similar skill, similar skill set and that we can run the entire office with both of them. And in this day and age, when your quarterback throws it a little bit and runs it a little bit, you better have two of them ready. Uh, as last year we could see with Rhett Rodriguez getting hurt, Chandler having to go, then him getting banged up, Rhett having to go, that sometimes you got to keep them rested up a little bit. 
So uh, I think just like Malik and Henry at running back, you'll, they'll complement each other and help each other and have the ability to make a big play. I think quarterback, we have the same situation and uh, uh, where they can uh, take the load off each other's back. You mentioned the environment that you're going to be in on uh -huh. Saturday night to start the college football season. Last year, you played in arguably one of the toughest in the country down in Tiger Stadium, and it was a one-score game in the fourth quarter. I know it's a different team. It's a new year. Mm -hmm. But is there anything you can take away with this group from that experience that you can use on Saturday? Well, that was a great example of trying to get the game to get to the second half. Uh, and that one, although we don't, have, we don't have to look back and say what would have, could have, should have happened, uh, because they could probably easily do the same thing where it would have been out of reach. But twice we were on their one-yard line. They didn't stop us. We had a guy wide open, and we kind of missed the throw. Uh, or a guy just uh, uh, the ball didn't get twice. We were down there and turned it over on downs, which would have been two more scores. And I think both of them, it was just we didn't execute the play, that they didn't have a guy right there to stop it. Uh, and so, but it, that's about all you, re, all you rehash from that. But like I say, the key is that you stayed close. You stayed close and you know you're within 10. Anytime I, I don't care if it's one of our conference toughest components and I'm having a tough game, if I'm within 10, that's a that's a touchdown, onside kick, field goal for going to overtime. Touchdown, I mean, that's, 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 that's three plays. Touchdown, onside kick, field goal. And that's, and I never, or touchdown, onside kick, touchdown. But I think anytime you start looking at what the, you can't ever get out of that mindset. I was talking about uh, to my players, uh, I guess the difficult not, uh, well there were, there's a team out there with the poor head coaches 21 and five, a uh, one and five and 21 in one score games. How many t games did that come down to a two minute offense or a four minute offense or defense or a two minute? And so that's what I want our players to understand that, that it, it's not over till it's over and that we've got to, uh, to, have to be, play as well as we can and hope to get it to that point, whether that applies to this game or others. I just think that's important. I, this will be, I, I've coached, I think I have 303 college games that I've been a head coach on that sideline. And I can remember all the times in the last two minutes we lost. Or the last four minutes we didn't get a first down and the defense was blamed for the loss. Uh, so I, that, those, that kind of plays into the philosophy of coaching. But when I, when I uh, see LSU, you talk about the little things or the final minutes and things like that. So. Yeah, <laughs> get this one down the last two or four minutes and I'll be the happiest man in Texas, I promise you. Having such a hard schedule, playing uh -huh. Texas, Alabama, ULL, the right. first four games, mm -hmm. how beneficial will that be once you go into conference play when the schedule kind of eases down a little bit? I think it can be very beneficial. If we don't get hurt, injuries, uh, no matter what happens in those first four, we, 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 I, I, I'm pretty sure I was one in three at, at Akron when we had the best year they ever had in history. Uh, and won the first bowl game. Uh, uh, God, I know we got beat by Oklahoma 55 to something, you know. Mayfield was there, and, uh, uh, and I don't want to say this would happen, but I, I think what happens when you start your schedule with three of your four toughest opponents, three three toughest opponents, that the head coach is responsible for managing the morale of his football team. So we don't want to talk about what's going to happen in game one or game two, game three or game four. But I think if, when you say, okay, how do you have the, t that opening type of schedule? Well, uh, experience tells you my job as a head coach is not to bring in some sports psychologist. My job is to manage the morale of our football team and make sure we're ready to play because the, the Sun Belt Conference will not be one in September. It will be one in November. And I'm pretty sure the deciding factors of this season, the, the conference champions will not be determined until November. And we only play one conference team in September. And so we will be either got a big time upset, you got to tell your kids it ain't over yet, or you've got to come overcome a tough defeat. Uh, and it isn't over yet. And I think, because so I think as I look at my, the past and try to apply it to this year, I said, let's play every game one at a time. Texas, you're up. Let's go. And then, Coach hey, Terry, let's 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 manage the morale of this football team. Let's turn any 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 win. Let's be careful that it doesn't turn into a loss. And every loss, let's make sure that doesn't turn into a loss the next time we week around as well. What are the advantages and disadvantages of both teams being under a second year head coach? Um, <laughs> that we both still have our jobs and it's our second year uh, in this day and age. Uh, 
sometimes if you don't have something happen by the second year, you don't have a job. It used to be you had five years to get a program turned around. I don't know where that went, but we don't have that anymore. If you don't start making positive movement by year two, uh, in many schools, as you all know, that can be a, um, uh, uh, you, you, it's your boosters you worry about, you know. But here, I don't, I'm not worried about that. But I think I think what we both can look to is the old saying uh, and that you, the most progress you make in, a, in development of a program is from year one to year two. Uh, and I think that's a lot. Now, again, this is the sixth head coaching job I've had, so this is the sixth time I've taken over a football program. Five of them, of those six, have been losing programs. And we've had to go from, a, from even Auburn. When I was there, they had two five-win seasons and were 0-3 oh, against Alabama when we went in there and won 11 straight and 20. At, at, at Akron, they were 1-11, 1-11. We, we didn't have winning season to year four. But we've won the first bowl game in history and had the first eight-win season in history. I don't know when it's going to happen or all those things, but I think the way I would look at it is for both head coaches that, and Coach sarcasian has been a head coach as well, is that uh, we can if if we learn from our mistakes and don't make the same mistake twice, and I've made a ton of them in my career. I've got 20. This will be my 27th year as a head coach. If I don't repeat any of them and just don't repeat the ones I've already made, you start running out of some of them, of, of the mistakes. And so I'm going to focus on the fact, players, men, we, 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 we're better than we were last year. We're a better football team. Schedule may be a little harder, but we're better. We're further along, we're better. You know, and, 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 we're, and it's going to show up on the field. And, uh, and that's, I would say both head coaches would try to serve, uh, focus on the fact that we're going to make great progress because tendencies are from year one to year two. You have a chance to really implement your system, uh, get get the trust of your players, they, the buy-in of your players. You begin to have a better chance of looking into the portal or looking into the recruiting system and fill gaps that you weren't able to fill that first year because you didn't know your depth, you didn't know your talent level very well going into the first year. You kind of know it after that first year, and you know where you need immediate help. You mentioned the talent of their quarterback, uh, Quinn Ewers. It's yeah. still his first collegiate start. How do you, if you can, use that to an advantage to almost rattle him? I don't know if we can. I don't know if we can use it to our. But we, we can use that to our advantage to rattle him. I mean, can we? Let's just blitz him every time. You know, I, I don't think you can use it. I think what we got to do is hope that there is something to the fact that you go in with a little bit of just nerves the first game in college. You know. Uh, if I were him, he might say, yeah, thank goodness I'm opening up against ULM. I'm not opening up against Alabama. Uh, uh, but I think what you got to do, that's, that's going to be more up to, to, uh, to, to him. He's, he, wasn't a, he, he wasn't born yesterday. He's been a very, very good quarterback for a long time. And uh, I don't imagine he's going to stop being one against ULM. So, again, he is a uh, – we've played some really good quarterbacks and we'll play some throughout the season. But as far as talent level – uh, he will have as much or more than anybody else that we play. And uh, I think what we could do is just go out there and uh, he's got to make he, – it's how he reacts. You know, I don't think it's how we can make him. You know, normally we'd say, okay, we got a rookie there. We're really – this game's about even. We're going to blitz every time. We, 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 we'll, we'll be playing single coverage the whole game against guys that are better than everybody we got. So you can't say – see, there's just different things you would do if this was a two, two, this was two top teams in the Big 12 and they got a rookie quarterback and we got a veteran defense and say, you know what we're going to do? We're coming after that guy. But, again, that's a, that's a little different than the situation here. And so we just got to play our game, play the best game that we can play for Texas and go from there. Now that the football season is here, mm -hmm. how would you? How do you think the off season went, especially with new coordinators and new players? Oh, you know, it's it it went like it was just meant to it went when it went meant to go. In that, would I have? Uh, I kind of knew when he, when I hired Rich, I you know this guy's going. I wanted him to be here, and he's going to be a head coach somewhere down the line. Uh, uh, then I think he saw how much fun it was building a, a smaller program, and so he jumped on that. Uh, and so I thought I might have him a year or two, but uh, I knew that was a part of it. Six of our coaches went, but he moved within a, about an hour of both of their homes in Carolina and uh, um, in Georgia, the ones that we lost to him. And, and uh, they probably had a little more money to play with that first year out. You get, you get, you get a little more money to play with. So, uh, but uh, so I wasn't, you know, that was, that was a big change. I had to go now, now let's go out and hire a staff, six more people. But you know how it is, I, I've been a head coach 27 years, my dad 50-something years, my brother 20-something years. There's a lot of high school, the college 
players and coaches that worked or played with us that, that are out there, we got some, I got some real good ones. I, I think, thank goodness, because of my, my background, there's a big pool of coaches out there that, that, that we can pull from. Because I think if we have a good year, we're going to lose some coaches every year. That's part of what we have. So that was the first big thing, is that we had to replace them. And now you're spring ball, you're putting in a new offense and a new defense. So now instead of just taking the last offense and kind of just moving that offense and defense to the next level, we are um, putting in new offense and defense. But we are doing with people we pretty much know their talent level. We know now we know which ones are, can play this level or can win in the Sun Belt. So we're a little further along from that point. And we got veterans. You know, um, uh, Matt Kubik and, and, and Vic Coning have both been very successful coordinators in our conference. And that helps you that you have that, that with you. So the coaching staff was the first change. The other one was we had no idea that we would lose three starters to the portal draft. Two of them after spring ball, we lost two of our starters to the portal draft. We lost a tackle that left in January. All those went to power fives. And we'll see whether that's to be as a starter or as a backup or whatever. Regardless, that's an attractive move to a group of five player, player who can go to a power five and be told, you know, you need to be playing power five or you're going to have a better chance to get to the NFL. So that's, that, that's a whole different thing. Recruiting doesn't stop anymore. Now, you, you, met, you, you know, building a roster is one of the most important things I've had to learn being a football coach over 27 years. How do you build a roster? How do you build it? You get through recruiting, you get through spring, and now you got your spring developed, now you train them. Oh, stop. After spring, now you got to go recruit three or four more players. That changes things. And so that, in that way, it's been a little different. I think you throw NILs in, that just makes the portal transfer even more good or bad, depending on how you want to look at it, when a team can say, I can't give you a scholarship, but there's a guy out there, I think he's going to give you an NIL equal to a scholarship, and we got, now we can go to 125, and so we're seeing how that changes. But you know what, um, and I would say as a coach, and I think every coach, if they're smart, I would say, you know, our job's not to not to uh, think that, there's, that those problems are not going to happen. Our job is to do a better job of managing those problems than everybody else in the Sun Belt. Everybody has the exact same problems. Let's manage them better than them. And so we've had to overcome some of that, losing players through the portal uh, that we didn't expect to lose and having to pick up some late. Coaching changes, which at the group of five level, when every coach on my staff, I would hope one day, would hope they might be at the power five level because it's just like you might want to work at ABC in New York one day. They pay a little better. Uh, and um, so I think you've always got that. So uh, uh, staffing, uh, the, the dynamics of managing your roster, you know, have, have, uh, are, the, are, the, are the, new, the new era of issues that you got, or the era of us. Coaching staff is not always an issue at a lot of places, but those are.